Hello, my dental health promotion is increasing oral and pharyngeal cancer screenings. And my name is Christina McCumber. Healthy People 2020 has identified oral cancer as a leading cause of death in, the, in adults and has recognized a need to increase that proportion of adults receiving screenings for improved detection. The Oral Hygiene Initiative 14.2 is to increase the proportion of adults who received an, an oral and pharyngeal cancer screening from a dentist or dental hygienist in the past year. The target population is 28.6% of adults. And the baseline characteristics are 23.3% of adults have received an oral and pharyngeal cancer screening from a dentist or dental hygienist in the past year in 2011 to 2012. This is a problem of great significance. As we can see, the effects of the lack of oral and pharyngeal screenings for the adult population include undiagnosed oral and pharyngeal cancer at early stages, surgical treatment and or surgical removal, chemotherapy and radiation therapy, oral implications post-treatment, costly medical expenses, and of course, premature death. Here we see that from the years 2006 to 2012, only 64% of people with oral cancer survived five years. Oral cancer globally. Oral cancer presents as a world crisis as it remains a highly lethal disease despite easy accessibility of the oral cavity. In developed countries, cancer is, a mo is the second most common cause of death. Oral cavity cancer is among the most prevalent cancers worldwide and incident rates are higher in men than in women. In Malaysia, oral cancer is the second most common cause of death due to cancer in males. 67% of individuals at the Malaysian public hospital were diagnosed with stage three and stage four at the time of the assessment. Barriers to care include Prevention and early detection methods have remained constant in the past few decades. Changing behavior or lifestyle is a slow and difficult process. And it has been estimated that 43% of cancer deaths worldwide are due to tobacco, unhealthy diet, physical inactivity, and infections. Oral cancer in America. So this is a dental public health issue in the United States of America. The number of new cases and deaths per 100,000, these statistics include the number of new cases of oral cavity and pharynx cancer was 11.1 per 100,000 men and women per year. The number of deaths were 2.4 per 100,000 men and women per year. These rates are age adjusted and based on a 2009 to 2013 cases and deaths. Lifetime risk of developing cancer is approximately 1.1% of men and women will be diagnosed with oral cavity and pharynx cancer at some point during their lifetime, based on 2011 to 2013 data. The prevalence of this cancer, in 2013, there were an estimated 300,682 people living with oral cavity and pharynx cancer in the United States. This oral health, health initiative includes a plan um, to increase the oral and pharyngeal cancer screenings. This will go through by gaining attention, for example, from the adult daycare centers here in Tampa. Th there we can identify the issues and causes for the lack of screenings. We will then determine priorities to address this issue. We will then develop a plan for education and implementation of the screenings. We will then implement a protocol for yearly screenings at these locations, and we will evaluate for improved detection at these facilities. The environment and workforce that this will entail will be held at the dental screening event. Um, the workforce will include dentists, dental hygienists, and dental hygiene students in the area that are willing to volunteer their time. For example, uh, an adult daycare center here in Tampa is the Oaks Senior Center. Once again, the workforce will include dentists, dental hygienists, and dental hygiene students willing to participate. The pros will be 
the convenience of the location for both us, but for the adults at the facilities that are unable to transport themselves to a dental office or anything comparable. These, uh, these patients at these facilities will then have increased exposure to oral and pharyngeal cancer screening and information. The cons will be just scheduling conflicts between the center and the students. Resources and funding. Our resources hopefully will be by mostly donations by dental companies and local offices. These products include gloves, gauze, tongue depressors, and oral cancer detection kits or lights. For funding, we can do grant writing for nonprofit organizations, requests from insurance companies and other local health agencies. And as these centers are federally funded, we can also pr provide federal funding requests. So it all starts with a dental, di dental hygiene diagnosis. So we will first need an assessment. We will perform oral and pharyngeal cancer screenings with both visual and palpable exams with screening aids. The objective is to increase the number of adults receiving oral and pharyngeal cancer screenings. The goals will be to increase dental professional and patient awareness of the need for these screenings and risk factors associated with oral and pharyngeal cancers. We will also obtain early detection and prevention of oral and pharyngeal cancers. Program measures and assessment. The indexes for measure will include the intraoral and extraoral exam. This will include examination and palpation of all oral structures with documentation of any abnormal lesion and referral for a subsequent biopsy. It will also include fluorescence and reflectance technology. This will, this will provide visualization of mucosal abnormalities such as oral cancer or premalignant dysplasia, documentation of any abnormal lesion and referral for subsequent biopsy will also be used. The time frame of study will be 12 months. This will include an initial screening with a six month interval for screening and then a 12 month follow up for another screening. This research design will be of a quantitative study design. The rationale is to collect data to evaluate the effect of increased oral and pharyngeal cancer screenings and the amount of early detection of oral and pharyngeal cancer in the adult population at adult daycare centers. We will use descriptive analysis that will be used to describe the participants, such as age, gender, socioeconomic status, and risk factors such as tobacco, diet, physical inactivity, or of viral nature. We will also use inferential analysis by comparing assessment times, once again at the initial six month and 12 month. Data analysis. We will provide statistical testing through descriptive analysis uh, by using frequency distributions, using measures of central tendency such as mean, median, and mode, descriptive analysis with measures of spread and dispersion between data points with standard deviation, such as variance and range, and also comparative analysis comparing two or three tests. We will then display our statistical data in three different visual aids. We can use a histogram in order to display our measures of central tendency. We can use a scatter plot to measure dispersion. And then we can use a table for comparative analysis between comparison of initial six month and 12 month screenings. Statistical decision making. The null hypothesis is no change in the early detection of oral and pharyngeal cancers. The alternative hypothesis is changes in early detection of oral and pharyngeal cancers. And then the alpha is set at a 5% P value or power. So if we decide to reject the null, but the null is correct, type one or alpha error is made with a 5% error value. And then if we decide to accept the null, but the null is wrong, we will then see type two or a false negative with a beta error of up to 20%.